This video was produced by All electronic instruments require energy or power to operate in the form of a voltage and a current. In the engineering laboratories we have a single output voltage controlled power supply that we will be using to provide power to the instruments under test. I'm going to explain the operation of this power supply. Keep in mind that this uh, operation applies to not only this power supply but most other laboratory power supplies that you will find uh, out in industry as well as throughout labs uh, at JMU. So um, the concepts for operation are very similar uh, between all of the laboratory power supplies. Here we have a single output power supply that in which you can control the voltage as well as control the current. Um, on the left hand side is the side that is going to display voltage and you can control the voltage using the voltage knobs right here. And the current uh, it is going to be controlled potentially uh, independently of the voltage. It depends on certain circumstances when that occurs and I'm going to explain that. Um, the first thing that you should do for safety's sake when turning on a laboratory power supply is after you plug the power supply in, make sure that the power supply button is in the off position. Also, before you turn it on, make sure that all of the knobs, both the voltage and the current knobs, are turned all the way counterclockwise, that is to the zero position, to make sure that when you turn it on, there's not going to be a voltage applied to the system under test. Also, make sure that you disconnect the power supply outputs from any electronic device that you are going to test. First, we have to set up the power supply before we adjust the output voltage. Once that's confirmed to be true, now you can turn the power supply on by simply flipping the power supply on off power button. This is a single voltage output power supply. And you're probably wondering why we have three output ports on this power supply. What you have to keep in mind is that to provide power in the form of a voltage and a current, we need to have charges being separated so that an electric field is created. Work is done by the power supply to separate these positive and negative charges onto two different plates, if you will. And these two plates where the, where the charges are separated occur at the positive terminal and the negative terminal right here. So both of those are needed to get a single output voltage. This third terminal in the middle determines where the ground reference potential is going to be located and we'll talk about how that occurs. But the important thing to keep in mind is that the voltage that is being generated is creating a potential difference between the red terminal and the black terminal right here. Once you've turned the power supply on, the next step is to set the voltage at which you would like the power supply to operate. That's pretty straightforward. What you do is you turn the voltage knob right here. This voltage knob is a coarse adjustment and if you need to tune in to a finer voltage, you can use the fine adjust control knob located right here. All right, so this turns, this changes the voltage in large increments, whereas this changes the voltage output in small increments right here. I'm going to return that to zero, and I'm going to attempt to set the power supply to about five volts right now. All right, so I'm going to use the coarse knob to get close to five volts. And then I'm going to use the fine adjust knob to try to get my output a little bit closer to five. The green numbers indicate the voltage setting of the power supply. Now it's important to keep in mind that you do not trust the numbers that are on this display. This display is not accurate so when you want to set a precise voltage or an accurate voltage, you need to check the output voltage between the positive and the negative terminal with a voltmeter or a digital multimeter to be sure that it is set at the voltage that you want it to. This display is often off by um, several hundredths of a volt. So if you need a precise voltage, again, you need to check it 
with um, a digital multimeter. And that's all there is to setting the power supply voltage. Before I connect any instrumentation or equipment to the power supply, I'm going to turn the power supply off. It will retain that voltage setting and then I'm going to use my leads, my banana leads, to plug into the output posts. Right. Once I turn the power supply back on, it should resume with the voltage setting at which I turned it off at. And at this point we will have a potential difference between the black post and the red post of 5 volts. I'm going to turn the power supply off again and now we're going to talk about what this middle binding post does. Again, the voltage supply right here uh, that you set it at is always going to maintain a potential difference between the red post and the black post. Right now we have that potential set at 5 volts. A voltage is a potential difference, so between the red and the black that will always be 5 volts right now with, with the current setting. But that does not mean that the black post is at 0 volts potential relative to our ground or our building ground. So that 5 volts, if you were to measure the 5 volt output at the red binding post, if you were to measure that with respect to say the wall outlet ground, or the table, or something else, it may not be 5 volts. It may be 7, it may be 10. Because right now we are operating in a floating configuration. That means that neither the positive terminal nor the negative terminal of the power supply is referenced to ground, to the building ground. In order to make the power supply output be referenced to the building ground, we're going to connect one of the terminals, either the positive terminal or the negative terminal, to the building ground binding post. So this green post in the middle serves as the ground reference and it is directly connected through the power supply plug in the back of the power supply to the building ground or to the uh, ground plug in the power supply outlet. So to create a positive voltage output with respect to the building ground, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these binding post knobs. And one way to do it would be to connect directly with a cable the green post to the black post. So what that's going to do is say that I want to maintain a 5 volt potential at this red output relative to the black output and that black output is going to be referenced to the building ground which is this green post. So we could connect them directly with a wire but this power supply also has a handy ground strap to it. It's this uh, metal piece right here and this piece is free to turn around and what you want to do is turn that metal piece and then um, orient it so that it can be slid into the back of the black binding post right here. And, and then after that's done, screw the two terminals down so that the metal band or the ground strap makes a good connection between the two terminals. The reason that we would want to do this is for primarily for safety's sake. We want to generate right now 5 volts potential at the positive terminal with respect to the uh, negative terminal and that negative terminal now is referenced to our zero volts potential uh, of the building. So now when I turn this power supply on it will again provide the 5 volts. Now that 5 volts will be will measure as 5 volts with respect to the wall outlet ground. A similar thing occurs if I want to create a negative voltage with respect to the um, building ground. And now what I'm going to do is instead of tying the black or negative output terminal to ground, I'm going to reference or tie the red terminal to the building ground. All right, so again I'm going to unscrew the terminals, I'm going to flip the binding post or the binding uh, strap around, and I'm going to make sure that the red and green outputs are connected. Again, 
The power supply is always going to maintain a 5 volt potential between the red output and the black output. But now, the positive output, the red output is always going to be zero. So the only way that the red output can be 5 volts higher than the building ground is if the output at the negative terminal is 5 volts below the building ground. So in this way, when I turn the power supply on, I will be getting a negative 5 volt potential with respect to the building ground, but my display is going to say 5 volts still. And that's because it's still generating a 5 volt potential. This display does not care where that potential is referenced to ground. So that's why it's always going to display that. Okay. Again, the important things to keep in mind is that a potential is always generated by the power supply with respect to these two terminals. This display is always going to tell you that voltage potential. Okay, so far I've talked primarily about voltage. The other feature of this power supply is that it can provide some current limit protection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie my voltage back to uh, the building ground reference so that I'm going to be generating 5 volts, positive 5 volts with respect to the building ground. We'll often, when we're testing equipment, we may want to uh, limit the amount of current that can be delivered to that equipment. The reason is, is that we want to, first of all, protect ourselves to make sure that if something goes wrong with the circuitry under test, we're not going to be generating too much power or, or uh, putting too much current through the system. Uh, at the same time, we want to protect the instrumentation or the equipment under test too. So if there's a fault, we don't want to send too much current, generating too much power in the equipment which could damage it. All right, so the way that we limit the current is we are going to use this feature uh, of the power supply, which is called the current limit. And the way that we do that is we are going to press the CC limit button. Well, after we press the CC limit button, you'll see that this red LED lights up. That indicates that we are in current control mode. Now, right now, to set the current control limit, we're going to have to hold the button down. Okay, so. Again, to make this happen, you have to have a voltage being generated across the terminals and press the CC limit button. At that point in time, we can adjust the current limit that we're going to allow. So right now, the lowest that this power supply will allow us to go is about 0.3 amps. All right, so I'm going to adjust it to the lowest uh, current, supply, uh, current limit that's available for this power supply right now. After I set my current limit, I'm going to turn the power supply off and I'm going to connect a low resistance element to my power supply. Now that I have a low resistance element connected to the terminals, we'll notice now that this red CC light is on. That indicates that we're operating in current control mode. So now what the power supply is doing is it's trying to provide 5 volts of potential between the black and the red terminals. But it's bumping up against that current limit. So it's saying that to provide 5 volts, I need more current than you have set the current limit to allow. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to provide 5 volts, I'm just going to provide the maximum amount of current that you have set, which right now is 0.29 amps. All right. If I want to increase that limit, what I can do is I can operate the current just like I do the voltage control knobs over here. I can use the course adjust knob to increase the current, and I can also use the fine adjust knob to increase the current by small increments. And you'll see as I adjust the current now, the power supply is providing that constant current. And to generate that current, it's adjusting the voltage. Okay? This again only occurs for low resistance elements. It's a protection um, feature of the power supply. And only when this red CC light is on is when the uh, power supply is operating in the current supply mode.
All right, so in this mode, the power supply op operates as an ideal current supply. When I remove the low resistance element and turn it back on, I can provide 5 volts to the system or close to 5 volts to the device under test without exceeding the current limit. So in this mode, since there is a high resistance between the positive terminal and the negative terminal, I'm providing a constant 5 volt supply with no current limit. That's about it for the operation of a single output power supply. In the future, you may need to tie multiple power supplies together to be able to get multiple voltages, and we will talk about that soon.